too. We just dropped the trailer here in Edwardsville, Illinois. Slept last night at the truck stop. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is go to truck stop where I was last night and uh, get my car, go Walmart, buy some oil and coolant, and then whenever they're loaded, they're gonna call me, and then yeah, we'll go from there. I'm a PNG, so you know they're gonna take a good minute. Just rolling. I figure I'd show you guys. You know it's crazy how much faster a truck without a trailer is. Oh, the fan. Yeah. Keep on rolling, get out of here, and then catch you there. You know, the crazy thing is, nowadays, people just, like, don't give a crap about anything, you know? These companies and stuff, like, where they work, and it's just crazy, you know? AC blowing cold. I'm like, th these masks are so annoying to freaking wear. You walk into an office, none of them are wearing masks, but you gotta wear this crap. Like, y'all could have it yourself. Some people are just like so rude about this stuff. Like, I understand you, you want to be protected, but I think that you should wear a mask if you want to be protected. The whole thing is just a mess. What's up everybody? Hopefully everyone's doing good. Um, uh, we are in Casey, Illinois. With the usual loads. And uh, yeah, we're getting loaded up here with fuel. I uh, loaded that load earlier today. I dropped the trailer and I basically went home, went to Walmart and all the good stuff. And uh, then they called me, went and picked it up and now we're rolling this truck stop always makes you hit uh, you just start feeling outside and then you go inside let's see if it's gonna ask me anything it's gonna ask me let's see hopefully it's not it's a little bit windy but hopefully you don't see it begin feeling All right, seems like we're good. Let's go to the other side. The thing is, I'm focusing on the aperture. It's set really low, so it's kind of like blurry with everything. lift this or if I use gloves but oh well KC Illinois exit 129 it's super bright outside so uh, my aperture is not working the greatest but let's set this guy right here but yeah so long story short we're in KC Illinois and we're heading to Pennsylvania basically delivered tomorrow whenever I get to it so no rush I have about it's like 700 something miles it's up 176 totally it is 40,000 pounds so it's just kind of like a crappy part uh, after fueling we're gonna run inside pay and then we're gonna stop over here have some food eat because I am starving because last night I really didn't even eat I just went and uh, unloaded and I moved to truck stop did my 10 and I just went to bed uh, but after that 
Then in the morning, I went and dropped my trailer, went home, went to Walmart, and then that was basically the story with that. So I did not eat, so I'm starving. So that's the plan. Yes, yeah, still have my freaking vest on. It's getting windy now. That's the plan. I uh, have some food and rolling. And basically, yeah, we'll get you guys once we start doing that. So, let's go. so I know a lot of people are like, why are you showing us what you're eating, etc., etc. Well, I think other truck drivers want to know what other truck drivers are eating or healthier ways to eat different foods and kind of to plan out your trip. So that's what I'm doing. But either way, if you don't like it, move on. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna try to start eating healthier. I wanna show you guys, I usually am not a fan of rice, but this rice is awesome because it's not dry at all. This is what I've been eating. Pretty healthy, good stuff. It's not dry, you can eat it with some, you know, sausage, meat, whatever the case. This time, we're eating some good old pasta. And these are like uh, chicken breast patties. Made these at home and then just brought them and then just cut them up, heat them up. And I know not everybody's a fan, but some, some cottage cheese on your pasta is fire. And obviously you gotta have some sweet baby rays, you know, can't, can't do it without that. And then, you know, I've been, I've been trying to stay away from like drinks and stuff, uh, at least try is the keyword. I need to find like a, a zero calorie version of these, but these are like really good. These are light. Uh, I've been drinking these, I'm just pour them in a bottle of water and call it a day and it's some good stuff. Um, so you don't drink a whole can of Mountain Dew or Coca-Cola or whatnot. It's just it's just so important, and I think we we under underestimate how important it is to uh, make sure your health and your food and your diet is in check. But yeah, that's the plan. We're gonna eat some food, do our break, and then we're gonna get rolling. So yeah, let's go drive. Essentially, all right, let's get it going. I forgot my mic. I don't even know where I put it. So. We're going commando. Let's get going. That Freightliner over there little really went to McDonald's with the truck. He's got boats on the back, so I know he's not delivering anything to McDonald's. I guess McChickens are too good to pass up. I guess maybe he thought that they had truck parking or maybe he just doesn't give a crap, which is most likely the case. Come on now, fellas. Thank you for the, you know, it, it, it really grinds my gears when I, when I'm waiting for someone to pass so I can turn. And like, they're quite a bit away as well. So like I could most definitely have made a turn, but I don't want to risk it or, or piss them off. Cause I'm like, you know, screw, I'm a semi truck, I'm slow. And then they give a turn signal as they're turning. It's like, holy crap, come on. If you would have just given that turn signal, like just use your turn signal people. It's not that hard. But see like this guy is mad that I pulled out. flicked off and stuff all the time by drivers four-wheelers that are mad you're going slow like sorry I, I wish I had a Tesla truck speed but I don't you know I'm a 20 year old truck that's hauling 41,000 pound, pounds uh, so it is what it is you know but anyways we're going to Shippensburg PA we have quite a way to go. I'm basically gonna roll until I run out of hours, but you got like five hours. So I'm not gonna make it very far. We're like exit 129, Ohio is like 400. So I think I'm gonna make it into Columbus area most likely. And then I'm gonna have like 350 miles, 300 miles. I'm not sure. 
to do that tomorrow because it will be out of hours by what seven eight o'clock Glasses are on get this lemonade stuff is really good actually trucks are getting more and more reliable day by day but uh i just wouldn't want to buy a new engine there's a guy locally or was selling a brand new 127 detroit for twelve thousand dollars so it's like if you could come by a nice classic roller i don't see you paying more than eight thousand dollars for it that's a nice shape maybe even ten let's say pay ten you get that even let's say you even get a rebuilt tranny and with all that you throw like 10 grand into it you do the work yourself engine 12 you know 30 35 grand you could have a great truck that would serve you for years to come it's just a lot of uh, things to, to, to consider when buying these trucks it never even came to me how important gear ratios are depending on where you run you know gear ratios are really important and even though I'm still not understanding fully all the gear ratios that are available on your axle I need to look into that not really feeling that color but it's nice you know it's not a bad looking truck but definitely personally would not choose that and labor and 
all your time at home spent wrenching on it. And that's the bare minimum, you know? And your truck, you get the comfort of it. I mean, you know, it's just obviously new is new. You can, you know, not to say that you can't find some amazing used trucks, you can, but there's a lot of luck and research. Because, you know, you have people that go out to a fleet that had 200 trucks and they buy one of those trucks and then they're like disappointed why the truck engine fails at 650,000 miles. Well, because that company probably did an oil change every 30,000 miles. Even though the manufacturer says that, those engines, I, I, I personally would not do them every freaking 30,000 miles. Something going on up front. Do them every 15,000 miles. That sludge builds up. It's gonna ruin your cams, it's gonna ruin your rollers. It's gonna do a bunch of damage. And I've learned a lot from, from just watching people that buy use trucks just kind of everything to inspect and <clears throat> if you could borrow a truck for like half a day take that valve cover off and check out those rollers and cams and all the goodies up there and there's a bunch of sludge built up you know that thing was beat up on hard I wouldn't go with that but my personal idea of the whole thing is buy an owner operator own truck because a lot of times that owner operator is just selling it to upgrade to something better because they paid it off or they're getting out of business or they're going in a different direction. Those big companies, they buy a truck because they knew they would sell, they sell a truck because they knew they would sell it at those miles. As soon as that warranty is out, they're selling that truck. They're selling it for a reason. They didn't maintain it and they know it's gonna fail. That's just my idea at least my theory so you know that's why I say obviously there's a lot of owner operators they take care of their Volvos and 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 their Scadias and then T680s but a lot of those trucks are just fleet owned trucks so I think buying something like a W9 or 379 or Coronado you're much more likely to get a, a used owner operator truck that actually took care of it at least that's my uh, idea of it. What I would do if I was buying a used truck. And at the end of the day, the engine isn't even the worst thing. There's always these little things breaking down that are like super annoying and that can cost you a lot of money for small repairs. Engine breaks down, you get a new engine and call it a day. You know, I mean, you got your clutch, your tranny, your turbo, I mean, hell, even things like your radiator, they're, they're timely repairs. A shop will charge you a free penny. So if you're gonna get a used rig, you better be able to work on it because if you're gonna pay a shop, plus you're sitting at home not working, that's gonna be pricey. If at least you're fixing it yourself, okay, you're not working, but you're saving the money on the, on the truck labor. So that's good, but yeah. That's just kind of my two cents on it and what I've learned within these two, two and a half years trucking and throughout driving this truck. This truck is 20 years old. Even though mechanically it's, it's sound, it still has like small issues that are just annoying. Like you hear this rattle, it's somewhere in the dash. But those are things that don't stop you from, from driving, so it doesn't matter. But still, like there's gonna be little things like that airbag that went out and hoses and whatnot. There's a lot of things taken into account, but yeah, guys. Enough blabbering. We're gonna keep on rolling and uh, catch you guys later. I'm gonna take this call.